Hello, I'm Catalina Maria Johnson. On behalf of Beat Latino and Gozamos, it's a pleasure to be here with Ulises Hajis de Venezuela. Hola, Ulises. Bienvenido. Welcome to the LAMC. Thanks. Uh, you seem to know your way around. We were talking about Chicago, yeah. right? And you like Chicago. Yeah, I love Chicago. One of my favorite, uh, my favorite city in the States. Like, I played there twice. Last year, I played like in a really small TV bar. I can't recall the name. And also playing on the Little Net offices. Wow. So, I really love Chicago. I love the deep fried pizza uh -huh. dish stuff. <laughs> and I love it. I love Chicago. So, Ulises, tell us a little bit more about now, I read that you're Greek and Venezuelan. Is this, is this really true? <laughs> yeah, my dad, uh, when he was like 21, he moved in Venezuela in the 50s. Mm. And yes, I'm half Venezuelan and half Greek. I'm, I consider myself Venezuelan because I'm, I'm not like, I don't speak Greek and I, I, I don't I've been to Greece that much. But uh, yeah, like I'm half Greek. Now, did you grow up, uh, in terms of, you? tell me a little bit about your musical formation. Did you grow up with both uh, Greek and Venezuelan music, and did you study music? Tell us just a little bit of how you came to be who you are in terms of musically. I wasn't like a musical kid. Like, mm -hmm. there's a kids, like, the kindergarten teacher says, like, oh, my God, he's a musical. He sings all the time. You should get him some piano lessons. No, I was like a regular kid. Uh -huh. like, um, but then, uh, at the age of 12, I, I, at the age of 10, I discovered the Beatles, and it was like, wow! The Beatles, yeah. interesting. And then at the age of 12, I started guitar lessons. It was really hard for me to play guitar. Like, it wasn't, like, really skilled. Mm -hmm. But the idea of having a band, of, and I love music so much, that that really drove me. It was like a, a really, um, a really huge drive to be a part of music. So that's why I became a musician, more of part of a necessity than an ability. There's a lot of musicians that are musicians because they were really good at it from the beginning. And I wasn't, like I wasn't really good at 12 or 13 playing guitar. But I really like stuck to it and I was, uh, I worked hard and then I became less bad, I guess. Mm -hmm. Now have you always been composing uh, kind of in the genre that you're in now or have you been, did you experiment with different kind of sounds before you came up with your... I think it was like a circle, like uh, the first time that I fell in love with was the Beatles and uh, Rock Latino, mm -hmm. like I Fines, Café Tacuba, Los Fabulosos Cadillacs, Atarse Pelados, like when, when I was uh, 13, 14, then I started to listen like progressive rock, mm -hmm. like Yes, Hair Rush, King Crimson, and then I started to listen like, to jazz, like John Coltrane, Alan Holsworth, uh, Pat Metheny, and then I played in a ska band, drums. Wow. And then, uh, towards that, I became a, a, again like in love with rock in uh, Spanish to songs because uh, they're playing instrumental music and then became songwriting again. But yeah, but I mean, uh, yeah, you, I can see a little bit, a little bit of all of that in what yeah. you do. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, could be like, but Method is a huge influence in my guitar playing, although I don't play as well as him. There's like a lot of little stuff that I took from his playing. Mm -hmm. A lot of texture in, yeah. in your songs, I like that. Um, what about Venezuela? Now I heard of, in all that circle, you know, I heard a lot of things and where's Venice, what, hap what happened to Venezuela in the circle? Or, yeah. Was there some of that? Yeah. There's I'm like, sure there was, but. Yes, there's um, usually like uh, some schools that have this gaita thing mm -hmm. in December, but mine didn't, so he didn't play gaita. Gaita? Yeah, that's, that's not like the... Mm -hmm. Tell me the gaita it's the, not like the gaita, the gaita venezolana is like, uh, it's a 6-8, it's like tukaka, 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 kaku, kaku, kaku. So compare it to, well, I mean, I know the gaita colombiana. No, it's, it's like... Otra cosa completamente. Yeah, it's like, like horopo, it's really like... A horopo? Yeah, it's, it's like closer to the, I guess, probably closer to the gaita venezolana. It's closer to that, uh, the, the, those uh, six, eight from Colombia. Is it a percussion instrument then? No, it's no, it's not. It's like a style of music. A style Gaita of music. Is okay. With, uh, the tambora is like a little drum. Uh -huh. Cuatro is like a little bit yeah. bigger. Uh, the furro, that's a really weird instrument. It's like a drum with a stick on it, and you like you rub the stick uh -huh. and it gets like a, a lower wow. sound. Like wow! 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 And uh, the charrasca is like a wiro, but made of steel. 
Wow. It's really loud. It's like... Gang, gang, gang. <laughs> that sounds so cool. I mean, and yeah. I don't know anything about it, so I have to look it up. Because the thing with Gaida is, 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 is a type of music that only happens in December. Oh, really? It's, like it's a music. holiday music. Okay. Christmas music. So... Well, it sounds a whole lot better than, you know, White Christmas or, you know, <laughs> what we have. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Cool. Yeah, so, so I, I, you grew up in that environment, and you also grew up in the environment of uh, Europa music. The thing is, the, the like, uh, folklorical, like, Europa, it's really hard to play. It's not, like, easy music. <laughs> like, there's folklore music that is quite easy to play. But Gaeta and Europa is really hard to play. So it's not like, ah, I'm going to play that song. Like, there's some aguinaldos, that, like Niño Lino, it could be easier. Uh, but for me, like, folklore music in Venezuela is mostly like holiday music. Mm -hmm. Like aguinaldos y gaitas. Wow, wow, wow. So uh, tell me about kind of your musical vision. What do you want to share? What do you want people to take away from a concert after they've heard and while they're there? Well, my, pri my priority, my music is to be honest and to be personal because that's the type of art that I like. I try to reproduce uh, in my art uh, the type of art that I like in others. Like for me, um, they are artists that they are like slaves of their, their audiences. They, they, they like to like please them, like kiss, you know, like I want to please my audience. I want to give a great show. Like uh, for me, uh, I make this resemblance like... Uh, there's musicians and artists, they're, uh, they're like, with their audiences, like, I'm going to cook you whatever you want. Mm. Um, I'm like, my dynamic with my audience is more like, I want to cook you what I like the most. <laughs> my I favorite food. And my I favorite hope food. And yeah. hopefully you will like it. Uh -huh. And I think that's better because if you invite me to your house to eat, I, pre I prefer to eat what you like the best. Mm. Because that's what you cook the best. Right. And the way I meet you. I, I, I get to know you better. But if you cook me what my favorite meal, probably won't be like the best time I ate it and it will be awkward. So I try to make the music I, I think I will like the most and hopefully somebody will like it also. And what's your favorite Venezuelan food? <laughs> pavillon Croyo. Yeah, el pavillon Croyo. You know it? No, tell it's me like, about it. It's, it's, it's like five things. Like uh, beans, black beans, rice, plantains, sweet plantains, uh, fried. Uh, carne mecha is like street meat, like, and on the top they put an egg on it. <laughs> like your music, a little <laughs> bit of everything. <laughs> yes, yeah. um, I'm going to ask you about the political situation in Venezuela. Okay. We can always, uh, you know, if, if you no, want to comment, fully political, fully yeah. Political. Tell, tell me about, you know, your your impressions on the last, the most recent events. The thing is, um, the first thing you have to know. Venezuela is a really rich country, really rich. Like dinero rich yeah. or okay, yeah. not rich like we have like I don't know like uh, great mountains and great people. No, 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 no. It's really it, rich in money. Okay, uh, by the time Chavez, 14 years ago, uh, took the power of the country, uh, the bar barrel, this barrel was this in English? The barrel, the barrel. The, barrel, the old barrel was in like six, seven dollars. Now it's like over a hundred dollars. Wow. So imagine like. Multiply for like a thousand what you earn a year. It's like a lot of money. Okay. First of all, this. Uh, second of all, uh, the political model is um, like a socialist, where the state takes everything. Like the idea, when you're at such a rich country, uh, you can take a lot of stuff uh, with expropriations and stuff. So uh, you have to know that this is a model that uh, tries to. Uh, like in the end, the state is everything. That's it. Like the private uh, investment doesn't have like a place in that dynamic. In the dynamic. Um, in order for you to get the state everything, you have to make everything political and everything of your political party. So uh, all of the uh, governmental, all of the state, uh, like institutions, are really politicized. Like you have to wear like a red shirt if you work at the IRS, or you work at uh, I don't know um, at the port, or you work at the. So Paris every government like. office, but but that's a uniform, right? Yeah, Kinda? but it's red like the it's red like the like the like the party like the I see, like I the see. PSUE, like right. the party of Chavez and now Maduro. 
and they tell you there that if you're going to a, a rally, they, they, they will fire you, and they say it aloud, like just tapes of that, like, everybody here that's not with Chavez will be fired. So it's really hard to uh, grow in a country, like last time I went to the Vive Latino, and usually like when Jepe goes or Javier goes, or the guys from Uruguay go, the government pays for their tickets because it's great to be in the Vive Latino, it's a huge festival. Uh, they told me like, does the government pay for artists to go to their places? And I say like, mm -hmm. yes, if you are- Uruguay, A member of the party. If you're not a member of the party, you're totally excluded. Um, so it's really hard to be a, 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 a part of Venezuela because you feel like a B citizen. Mm. Like you're an A citizen if you're with the party. You got access to a really good job and loans and stuff. But if you're not with the party, that's my case. And I, I don't agree with the Chavist uh, the sí. ideas. Agenda. Uh -huh. um, you are like a B citizen. Mm. And it's really hard. Like now, I'm also a, a college professor, mm. but I, I teach at the at the like a state university, and it's autonomous. And that's like the only uh, part of the state system that the ch uh, the child thing hasn't gone into mm. because it can because it's autonomous. And it's incredible. Like I earn like I don't know, like a two hundred dollar a month. Mm. Like and now this is in, in a strike. The the whole universities. And it's really hard. Like. The, the, the government tells us that we're uh, greedy. I'm like, I'm not greedy. I want to earn like a decent salary like everyone else in, this, in the government. But they won't, they won't give us. So. Is that hard for uh, music, musicians then to, in, I mean, besides not yeah. being able to travel? but Be Because in but Venezuela, most of the shows are not like ticket shows. They're like what they call institutional shows. Most of the artists are living in Venezuela of music. They play like in in, in, in alcaldías, like yeah. in, in city free halls, shows, city halls, like in free shows on the street, uh, par, uh, parties of like I don't know the police, so something like that. Uh, and when you're not with Chavez, uh, they won't hire you. But you know, Venezuela has such a reputation with uh, el sistema of developing musicians. But yeah, that el sistema is is like this thing. Um, it's great. I, I like the system. I like Udamel, I like Abreu, they're great. But they're classical musicians. It's like another That's thing. another... They have a lot of money. And I think it's great that they have a lot of money. Uh, but usually, the musicians that we play, like, more uh, like pop music, we don't have, like, that system. Like, to support you. The thing is, Dudamel has been really clever. Like, he's not with Chavez all the way, but he's not anti-Chavez all the way. So the government know that he's like a really important piece of their chess play, and they not they not they not put too much pressure on him, like mm -hmm. to be all the way for Chavez, uh, and he's really smart to not go all the way against Chavez. So that's why I think the the system is really unpolitical, like, un unpoliticized. Mm -hmm. They don't get the kids to be like great teachers and stuff, because I think Abreu and 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 Dudamel. They know their place in the chess game, and they'll be really smart. Uh -huh. Well, uh, we look forward to pop and rock and everything getting uh, the support that it needs, yeah. that classical has had. It's been good, though. At least Gustavo Dudamel and uh, have has as a you know such an important figure in the classical scene has hopefully will shed some attention on, on everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah? and. Uh, Thank you very much for your time. Oh, we look forward you. to your next visit to Chicago. I yeah, hope it's soon. I hope soon, I hope soon, 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 soon. I love one some of that thick pizza. <laughs> thank you, Elises. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.